This video is all about covered calls. Why would you sell a covered call? Is selling covered calls safe? What are the risks of selling a covered call? What exactly happens when you sell a covered call? And can you lose money on a covered call? First and briefly, when you sell a covered call, for each call option contract that you sell, you would need to own 100 shares of the underlying stock. Here you see an example of that. Notice at the bottom where the white arrow is that we own 300 shares of Realty Income ticker symbol O. Just above that, where you see the negative three, notice that we have sold three contracts, which corresponds to 100 shares per contract or 300 shares worth of the September 17th $70 call option. Notice that our average price when we bought the stock was $65, and the average price that we sold the $70 call option at was $1.43 per share. Since Realty Income has come up in price over the past two months, this option is now trading for $1.80 per share. Realty Income is now trading as you can see here, just above $71 per share. If Realty Income is above this $70 strike price on September 17th expiration day, which is as you can see here 23 days away, if we don't do anything with this call option, then these 300 shares will be called away from us. So if there's a possibility that our stock can be called away from us, why would we want to sell covered call options? Let me show you all the trades we've done in Realty Income over the past year. Notice that up top, the first few lines here are where we were selling put options. But then on November 19th, those 300 shares of Realty Income were assigned to us at $65 per share. Since that time, we've just been collecting cash flow by selling call options, as well as collecting the monthly dividend that Realty Income pays. On occasion, we sold a put option here and there because we're not at full max position size yet. But those put option contracts were not assigned to us. As a result of selling covered call options, collecting dividends after we bought the stock, as well as selling some put options. As you can see here, our cost basis of Realty Income is only $54.21 per share. And remember that Realty Income is trading right at $71.25 per share. That means that if we let Realty Income be called away from us at $70 per share on expiration day, we have made a profit of $15.79 per share because of selling covered call and put options, as well as collecting some dividends in this position. So we would have made 22.5% on this position. Remember that a lot of that comes from cash flow that we received from selling options. We've been able to roll the strike price up where it was initially assigned to us at $65 per share up to $70. That means that we have pocketed over $10 per share from selling options in Realty Income. And this isn't some high-flying, extremely volatile company. As you can see here, Realty Income is less volatile than the overall market since this beta is only 0.7. So as you can see, you can absolutely just keep selling covered call options in positions that you own. The challenge comes if the call option you sold goes deep in the money. Again, notice that in our trades here, since we want to try and stay in this long Realty Income position so we can continue collecting covered call option premium as well as collecting that monthly dividend, whenever we saw that Realty Income was looking bullish, we rolled the strike price up and out in time. Notice that in all, we've done that two times. On April, we rolled it from 65 up and out to 67 and a half. Then on June 17th, we rolled it up 67 and a half to where it is at now, the $70 strike price. Just because a covered call option goes in the money, it doesn't mean that you can't roll it out and up. Here you see a nice example of how we like to trade in covered calls. This is a part that we could really keep going as long as we wanted to. The only question is, what kind of return could we get? If we're not able to achieve around at least a 20% plus annualized return on capital, then at that point, we'd let Realty Income be called away from us. When we're calculating that return on capital, we also are accounting for the increase in the strike price. But when should you sell covered call options? For me, the answer to that question is anytime that you own at least 100 shares of a stock. You don't always have to sell these covered call options right at the money. You can always sell covered call options that are out of the money, which will give you even more room if the stock were to go up in value. Notice that I've now switched the expiration date to October 15th, which is 51 days away. Notice that even though Realty Income is trading a little bit over $71 per share, if we were to sell a $75 cover call option, we could still pocket somewhere between 30 cents and 40 cents per share. If we go in the middle of them, we should be able to sell that cover call option for 35 cents per share. And that would allow for Realty Income to go up in value by $3.75 more before this option goes in the money. That would equate to over a 5% increase in order for your position to be in jeopardy of being called away from you over the next 51 days. It is possible, but it's not all that likely. I like to sell covered call options to generate cash flow as soon as I own at least 100 shares of a stock. I mean, you never know what's going to happen with a stock. Here you saw an example of a position that's gone our way. However, we have several positions in which we've been selling put options and the stock was put into our account. And so far, the stock is trading below that strike price that we bought the stock at. The nice thing about selling covered call options is that even if the stock price declines, we're still able to generate cash flow by selling those covered call options. And since we mainly trade in dividend paying companies, not only are we getting cash flow by selling covered call options, or in most positions, we're also collecting dividends. Keep in mind that if you really want to keep your stock, but you want to collect some extra cash flow by selling covered call options, you can always buy a call option back, and it puts you right back into just that position of outright stock ownership. 
So if I wanted to get rid of the possibility of real income being called away from me because of the September 17th $70 call option, I would simply have to buy it back. Right now, I would end up taking a loss on it because as you can see here, it's selling for right at $1.70 per share whereas we were only paid $1.43 per share. But if I didn't want the stock caught away from me, that's always a possibility. We don't do that, but if you really want to keep your stock for whatever reason, maybe you didn't want to pay tax on a large capital gain, then it's always a possibility to buy that option back. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like, just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Now the big question I'll answer is, is selling covered call options safe? Again, let me answer that question for you by showing one of our real life positions that we're in right now. Doing covered calls is pretty much about as safe as owning stock outright, except that you're decreasing your cost basis by the amount of option premium that you're collecting from those covered call options. Here you see another covered call position that we're in right now in Pinnacle West, which is a utility company. Notice at the bottom, we own 300 shares of Pinnacle West. We bought it for an average price of $85 per share because of put options that we'd been selling. When it was assigned to us back on June 18th, we immediately sold the July call option, as you can see here, for 95 cents per share. What's interesting about this position is that as you can see here, Pinnacle West is actually trading for right at $7 per share less than what we were assigned the stock at. It's only trading for $78.03 per share. And remember that we bought this stock because of put options that had been assigned to us and we bought at $85 per share. However, notice here that even though Pinnacle West is trading for right at $7 less than we paid for the stock, our cost basis is only $76.22 per share. As a result of selling put and covered call options at Pinnacle West, even though this position has moved against us by right at 8%, we're actually up in the overall position. Okay, so I've shown you two positions that are really going good for us or going pretty good for us. Now let me answer the question, is selling cover call options safe by showing you one that's gone really bad on us? Here's our absolute worst cover call position that we're in right now, it's in Campbell Soup, ticker symbol CPB. Notice that we were assigned Campbell Soup at $49 per share. It's currently trading at $41.30 per share, as you can see here. So right now, Campbell Soup is trading for $7.70 per share less than we bought it for as a result of selling put options at the $49 strike price. So if you take out any option premium we received in Campbell Soup, it's actually trading for 15.7% less than what we had to buy it at. We very rarely initiate a position by doing a cover call. Generally, we're selling put options in a stock. Once those put options are assigned to us, we then switch over to selling covered calls. But as you can see here, if we had initiated this as a covered call, would have bought it at $49 per share, would be down this position. So the risk of a covered call is that the stock can decline on you. However, because we are selling covered call and put options, that helps protect us from some of those losses. Now you see the rest of the story. Here you see every put and covered call option trade we've done in Campbell Soup since we started trading in it back in December of last year. Notice that not only have we been selling covered call options, we've also been collecting the dividend. And since the position was down so much, last month we even did a bearish credit call spread on top of it being a covered call. The result is that even though Campbell Soup is down over 15% from where it was assigned to us at, right now with our cost basis being only $43.40, we're only down $2.10 per share or 4.8%. The other risk you want to keep in mind about covered calls is what would happen if the stock went way past your short covered call strike price. If that happened, you might miss out on some of that stock appreciation. But keep in mind that if you really felt bullish about a position but still want to generate some cash flow, you could always sell a farther out of the money covered call option which would allow you to pocket some cash and still give the stock room to go up in price. Your return wouldn't be as good for that out of the money option but you would still be collecting some premium while waiting for the stock to appreciate. I like to suggest that people sell call options at a price that they be happy to sell their stock at. So is selling cover call safe? As you've seen, it's at least a little bit safer than owning stock outright. And over time, as the cash flow piles up, it can end up being quite a bit safer. If you'd like to receive alerts as soon as we make option trades, similar to the trades I mentioned in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to increase your knowledge on how to use covered call options to generate consistent cash flow in return, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Covered Call Option Trading Explained with Examples. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.